All right. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you yes. for being with us. Yay! Get this started off right. I'm so excited to have everybody here on the call. Yes. Fun. Yes. We had so much fun with you guys last month. I'm curious if you guys have access to the comments, which it looks like lots of hellos are popping up. If you were here a month ago for our first of this four part series, go ahead and you know, give us a little, type us a little, yeah, I was here. I'd love, we'd love to see how many returners we had and welcome to those of you who are here for the first time. We love cancer fighters. We love CTCA. This is such an honor for us to be able to just spend a little time with you guys. Um, talk about living life to the fullest and breaking rules that don't exist tonight. Yes. Is uh, one of our excited uh, kind of things that we like to share with people, right? This it is. is this is definitely one of the, the uh, passion projects we have is to get this word out. Yes, it is. And uh, uh, of course, you could also just raise your hand the old fashioned way. Uh, those of you that oh, are yeah. on Which the video. We have video. a lot of cameras tonight. I would so love, you. if you are comfortable, I would love you to turn your cameras on because we have, we have a wall of smiling faces looking at us right now. And I love to have, well, it's a partial wall because <laughs> a lot of people have their cameras off and that's okay. Yeah. I know that sometimes you're like, I'm doing stuff. I don't want multitasking or whatever. That's fine. Right. But if you, if you right. feel comfortable putting your camera on, we love seeing you because it makes it feel more like we're in a, in a room together, right? Even yep. though we're, we're virtually separated. But my name is Jason Kotecki. This is my wife, Kim, in case you uh, are new and you weren't here last time. Uh, I am an artist, author, and professional speaker. This is my partner in crime. She is a lover of whimsy, a uh, basically my better half, uh, great photographer. We've been doing this for 20 some years now and uh, we love the opportunity to be, to be sharing some ideas and some thoughts and hopefully some inspiration and have a laugh or two along the way. Looks right, like Kim? quite a few people coming back and quite a few new people. That's so awesome. thanks for saying hello. Glad I was here last that. time, Gloria says, first time here, thanks for having me. Courtney says, so thanks guys, we're excited. This is one of our favorite stories. Um, this is definitely one of those um, breakfast foods that we all love, but it's a little, got a little different state to it. Well, I don't know if anyone has ever seen one of these before. <laughs> very, it's a very specific kind of donut. It is a uh, chocolate covered sprinkled donut after my daughter is finished with it. Can anyone <laughs> relate to that at all? Uh, this is actually, this is a, an old photo now. Our oldest yes. daughter is 13. That, I took this picture when she was about three. Yes. And something inside me just felt like I needed to take this picture. And I had a little bit of a, a panic attack because you know, anyone who's, who's, who's a parent, you know, when you have the first, your first child, maybe some people, it's their only child like that. But that first time you become a parent, you're a little overwhelmed because you know that you have all these things you're responsible for. They don't give you a manual. And I'm all concerned about, you know, like manners and keeping them alive and how to tie a shoe. Like it never occurred to me. I had to teach my kids the proper way to eat a freaking donut. Who knew? And then it occurred to me after I took the picture that the donut eating police did not, in fact, break down our door and uh, revoke my daughter's donut eating license for doing it wrong. And so I thought, well, maybe maybe this is like a rule that doesn't exist, that there's a certain way you're supposed to eat a donut. And if this is a rule that doesn't exist, admittedly, very obscure. Right, Kim? Right. Um, how many more are there? And so countless, you guys thinking about that. Yes. I, I couldn't stop thinking about it. And I started to notice these so-called rules everywhere. I eventually wrote a book all about it. It's called Penguins Can't Fly and 39 Other Rules That Don't Exist. Now, the truth is there's probably about 7 million of them. I was going to say countless. This covers yes. 40 common ones <laughs> and maybe a few uncommon ones. But we're talking things like uh, a, a classic thou shalt not eat dessert first. Now, some of you maybe broke this one tonight. I don't know. But if we were kids and we wanted to eat dessert first, right? Let's... Oh, there would be no doubt that would be our choice, right? Like you would, it's very rare to have a, a child choose not to eat dessert first when given the chance. But as grownups, how often do we actually do it? Um, and we, we actually had a situation where we went out to eat. I ordered dessert first. It was at Olive Garden. Okay. And I told the waiter that I would like dessert first and then I'll order the entree after. 
and actually it was a waitress mm -hmm. and she was so confused. She asked me to clarify it like three times. And then I, we saw her go around to different wait staff and bus people and tell them. And it was such a big deal. We had yeah, no idea we were going strange. to disrupt things so much um, that it was that notable. Yeah. So that's a, that's a common one that yeah. we've all encountered this doubt shall not eat dessert first, but then there's things like this, thou shalt not wear white after Labor Day. And you guys I, know I, was, this one. I was curious about this right? one. So I did a bunch of research on that. And turns out that's a rule that doesn't exist. There's there's reasons it started, but the reasons are no longer relevant. But mm -hmm. there are some people who are adamant that you do not a big deal. wear white. No white pants, Day, no white right? sandals. Right. Uh, right. Possibly, uh, let's see, I'm not sure if, what the next slide is. Okay, oh, yeah, good. Yes. So uh, I have a, I have another one that has a little joke to go with it. I didn't <laughs> want to spoil the joke, uh, which is the, the joy of live, right? Sometimes that happens. But if you've ever been on vacation, you can relate to this one, right? Thou shalt do and see everything while on vacation, especially if you've been to a new place, right? And uh, what what happens, Kim, when yes. people come back? From you guys vacation? know you could say it with me. When you get back from that vacation, sometimes you need another vacation, right? Have a you vacation ever said that? from my yeah. vacation. Seen some nods there, right? Yeah. So there's we actually heard someone recently say, "Are you going on vacation or are you going on a trip?" Because mm -hmm. they're two different things. So there are you know different mentalities when you take a break. Are yes. you really taking a break? And, and now this this final rule I'll share is probably the most controversial. I, yeah, no doubt. It's the most controversial one. Um, so if I were to suggest that maybe this, you know, maybe this weekend, maybe tonight, even when it's time for you and your significant other to sneak into bed, it's time for bed, get into your comfortable clothes, your PJs or whatever you wear there. <laughs> and uh, if I were to suggest not being too awkward, uh, that you uh, try something a little bit different tonight. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Uh, and just, what are you alluding to? Just, just swap sides of the bed. Oh no. Oh no. We <laughs> can't be having that. That's crazy talk, right? This is a thing is that possible, is amazing to me. We've been married for over twenty years. Never once, never one time, did we have a discussion of what side of the bed would you like to sleep on? What side of the bed would you like? It just happened, and now twenty years later, we're still sleeping on the same side and it's very confusing when you get to a hotel and the bed is on a different wall and the clock radio is over there you're it's very disorienting you need like a compass like <laughs> where am i where's my side i don't know it's so so strange but this is a this is a really great test uh to see how willing you are to break rules every that don't exist, once right? in a while after we share this one people will come back to us every once in a while and say we tried and we couldn't last the whole night we like tried for like 10 minutes and then we switched back <laughs> i actually got an email one time i was in uh, denver speaking and i got an email from someone who was there and she said her and her husband uh swap sides that night and for 10 minutes they were just laughing <laughs> they couldn't they just it just felt weird it was awkward it was strange and I, what made me happy, she didn't elaborate on this. I'm like, I, you know, what if, what if they were in the middle of a, a difficult time in their marriage? And maybe this one little thing got them laughing and got them reminding them of why they fell in love together in the first place. I love um, Jim says, I'm alone. And I always stay on the same side. <laughs> Yikes. I love your honesty. And honestly, it is funny if he's gone, which, you know, um happens yeah. i'll just stay on my little side and you know yeah we joke about like when one of us sometimes if one of us is sick and coughing and goes to the couch or does something different it's like did you starfish last night yeah you know to be able to like starfish like just, just spread kind of, like, out spread out you know, i just bit. stayed on my little side as if i was like falling off yeah. you know uh yeah. let's see courtney says single girl queen bed equals starfish. yes yeah she's doing uh, life right <laughs> julie if i had a choice mine would be the middle <laughs> I, where's the lie right? right where's the lie most of the time mine is the middle anyway probably that, that, that is also a true statement I'm, I'm on the edge of the bed and i have no blankets that's usually how it ends up for me uh so the thing about rules that don't exist now as we talk about this tonight i need to be very clear i'm talking about rules that don't exist all right i'm not talking about speed limits traffic signs like Taxes. Paying taxes, like those are actually rules that don't exist. So I'm not, I'm not or rules that do exist. Or rules yes. that do exist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally ruined it. Uh these the I'm talking about the stuff we do just because. And a lot of times, sort of like the uh the sleeping on the same side of the bed is like a routine. 
right? Yeah. And, and routines are fine because cognitively we have routines and habits so that we don't have to make the same decision over and over and over again. It actually saves us time and mental energy. The problem is when those routines turn into ruts uh, because we haven't examined them. I see what in you did while. there with the colors. You like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, what are you, an artist or something? I do stuff. Yeah. Do stuff, yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's that's the thing. And a great one of my great lines, I love this from Ellen Glasgow. The only difference between a rut and a grave is their dimensions. This one hits hard. It hits hard because I do, I'm kind of a creature. Well, aren't we all a creature of habits? But I think I am the type of personality that goes to that direction a little farther than most. Would you agree I'm, with that? I'm not going to. I'm not the most that. spontaneous person. I'm you not going to object to that. <laughs> uh, so this one's a little fine line. Well, right? and that's the thing is we all have, we all have those things. And that's really the purpose of tonight, which is why I'm glad you're here. And I hope if anything comes out of tonight that maybe it will get you to re-examine some of the rules that don't exist that you might be living by. Because when we break them, we can not only create new opportunities for joy and happiness, we can create uh, be more efficiencies, be more pr productive because we're not hanging on to things that are no longer relevant. And uh, sometimes we can let go of some of the baggage that we're carrying around just by being aware of some of these rules that don't exist. Now, of course, uh, for those of you who were here last time, we got to do a little bit of review, okay? Uh, because part of the reason we have such a struggle with following these rules is what? What's our... Yes, we do have a bad guy that we are fighting every single day. And, you know, we like to talk about it's even worse than Darth Vader. And it's it, not as famous. We so speaking of, I, yeah. I'm thinking of Darth Vader. Uh, Mike says he came here specifically for tax advice. <laughs> uh, and considering we were at our at our accountant today we talking today. about taxes and I needed to have him explain things four times to me to understand <laughs> uh you don't want tax advice from us but uh that that You're gives me adult problems yeah. than that yeah yeah so yeah what we're talking about is worse than Darth Vader it's not as famous as Darth Vader but you will know what we're talking about as soon as you hear it, it it turns us from this this little you know joyful person that we used to be into her, I mean, come on, you know it, it's yeah. true. And then this is what we all kind of grew up like, but yeah, now- we, we start out young, yeah. enthusiastic, full of curiosity, joy, and then for some of us- There we go. Not, not great. <laughs> not great. I don't know if anyone, uplifted. Can, anyone can relate to. Well, we have to start with reality here, Kim, first. We have to start yeah. with where, where we're at. And sometimes this is where, sometimes we're, we're, where we're at. And this, this enemy we're talking about is called adultitis. Uh, which, you know, frankly, if you know anything about science or health, like adultitis means, itis means swelling up. So it's swelling of the adult. Yes. You have too we do. much adult, you've got problems. We do have a more official definition. But we don't really have to get into I that think we tonight. Should. Because we talked Not about it last time. Not everyone who was here last time. We talked about it last time. I think so. you can handle it. Yeah. <laughs> you, need to, you need to start memorizing this. Okay, the official medical definition of adultitis is... A common condition occurring in people between the ages of 21 and 121, more chronic illness, mild depression, super ice fossil, general fear of changes, some screen cases, the inability to smile, on sec, make sense, right? accelerate when access burden of bills, responsibilities, or born work like generally patient. This time of day, that is very impressive. This but. is this. It's bad news. It's bad news, and that's yeah. what we're here to to get rid of. All right, that's what we talked about last time. We have two more sessions coming up in future months. So if you like what this is all about, come back and join us again. Um, but there are <clears throat> signs. Okay, it, probably we've gone far enough that people can be like, I can tell if I have adultitis. Most or not. people have, but just some in case, form of adultitis. Just in case right. you need a little some warning signs to be on the lookout for. If this is your spirit animal. <laughs> That's that's an indicator that this you is, might have. I do like Zoom though because we're going to see some key cats go across the the, the cameras. Pretty yeah, soon. and I I love I can see John and Peggy. I can see you guys laughing. That makes me so happy. <laughs> I'm assuming you're laughing at us, but if not, don't tell us. We'll just pretend that and, you are. Maybe their cat will go by. Who knows? You, yeah, they seem like they might have a cat. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, they're like, no, we don't have a cat. But then the cat goes by. I'm like, well, that's a different problem. Uh, what else? What are some other things? If this is your idea of a spa day. Oh. 
All right, we're, we're yeah. working from home you can now, take a, a lot of us. Break. That's yeah. not a spa day. You no. can actually put the laptop away for a little bit, right? It also seems dangerous. Let's be honest. It could be. Yeah. Especially if it's, if it's plugged in. <laughs> Uh, and and a, and a final sign is if you are of the ilk that believes that they never should have legalized dancing, that would be this another is, indicator that you thinks. have. Yeah, she clear. Yeah. yeah, never should not have legalized dancing. Not not for dancing of any kind. Do you like to dance? Uh, yeah. yeah, not well. But, no, but, but we do. But yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's that's basically some signs. All right. The good news: breaking rules is the new black. If you want to get rid of adultitis, if you want your life to be less stressful, more fun, happier, joyful, mm -hmm. you want to have brighter teeth? No, we're, we're <laughs> going to stop there. Uh, breaking rules is a great way to do that. And uh, the question is, how do we break free from these rules? And we're going to we're going to get to that. But what I'm curious about is uh, I want to know, can, can anyone here, can you think of a rule that doesn't exist that you've noticed lately? Maybe it's one as we're talking about things, you realize oh, I totally do this, or you know someone else that does it, maybe a coworker, a boss, a friend, family member. I would love to just type in the chat, let us know of some of the rules that don't exist that are floating out there. And I promise you after tonight, you're going to start seeing them everywhere yes. because just getting that to your forefront of your consciousness is you're gonna see when you were starting to write the book i remember um because our phones share the same like camera feed i don't know if everybody's houses work that way but when when i look at my camera feed i on the phone i can see his pictures that he's taken okay which is always weird when he's traveling because i'm like oh that's what you had for dinner tonight <laughs> you know <laughs> i'm not stalking you it's just on my hmm. phone Curious. but um yeah but i would start to see all these pictures that were rules that don't exist like illustrations of them through photo on the phone which was really kind of fun because it was almost like a puzzle like oh yeah that's a rule that doesn't exist i see what he's doing there and you were collecting weren't you because yeah. you were putting up new ones all the time on instagram and things like that so yeah. we got some coming in we do uh okay. margaret a little earlier said sitting in the same spot at the table oh right or church that's oh, another one church, don't take right? someone's spot at church Oof, that could be bad yeah. yeah uh how about uh let's see julia says must go to bed by a certain time Ooh, that's yeah, bedtimes. That's yeah. definitely a rule that doesn't uh, exist. Margaret not talking to the people in line at the checkout. Yeah, that is a such a thing. thing, right? It's like almost look, inappropriate, look down, especially yeah. with masks, right? Yeah. You don't look at anyone. Uh, let's see what, what Donna Donna says. You have to wear something other than jammies to the grocery store. Oh, see, yeah. wear what you want. Yeah, right. Uh, oh, here's a good one. This one's actually in the book. Make your bed every day. Yes, I like breaking. We this have one. we have a we have a fight about that. One. <laughs> and uh, spoiler we don't alert: really have a fight. We just do things differently. Mm, I okay. don't make you the best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's the spoiler alert: in the book, I talk about this rule, and I I don't know if I actually come down one way or the other. I think I just say we're different. We're different. Um, yeah. And the reality is, is uh, you get to pick. I think that's part of it. Yeah. Part, of, part of it is that there isn't necessarily a right or wrong way to do things. It's more about challenging why do you do it in, in the first place? Like, what is the reason you follow this rule? And if you're okay with following it and it makes sense for you or your family, cool. Um, so one of the, the kind of stance we take a lot is like, it's not our job to tell you what to do or what you should think. We just want to challenge you to get out of those ruts of thinking and just re-examine why you're doing things you do, because there might be some opportunities to break some rules if you break some rules. Sherry Neal, it's good to see you here tonight. I love Sherry's. She says mm. um, that if you tell someone your birthday wish, it won't come true. Who's, who made that up? That was like totally somebody's grandma that like made that Someone up. Thinks that. Right? <laughs> right? Is it that lady who's against dancing? She's like, <laughs> do not tell your birthday wish. <laughs> but boy, has that one. It's along with the cookie dough thing. Don't eat cookie Don't dough. Eat You'll cookie get worse. Dead, dead. Is that true though? CDC, dead. <laughs> eat cookie dough, you're dead. Uh, I think that's a grammar rule too, but the rock, the rock. You know, thing, the birthday you know? wish is interesting too, because what if you have a big birthday party and you tell people your birthday wish and there's someone at the party that could actually fulfill your wish? Right. You're well, totally missing true. out, right? That's, could be like, oh, I didn't, that's your wish. I I, I happen to have right a now. Ferrari. I yeah. could give you, you know? 
You want a puppy? Uh, <laughs> I've got one in the box out in the garage. What, oh, here's one of my favorite ones. Gerald, you only eat eggs, toast, et cetera, for breakfast. Ooh, yeah, this is a big, this is a bug. How did certain yes. food, did they have an agent that was like, we're breakfast foods? Sorry, you're not allowed. You're not, a, you know, it's like That's if you have pizza point, for Gerald. breakfast, you're like, what are you, a hungover college student? <laughs> like, why can't you have pizza for breakfast? Why can you only have pancakes for, for lunch? Yeah. That's the other thing yeah. is people, when, when people eat breakfast for dinner, and I know some of you it's, love it, yeah. people tell me about it like they're getting away with something. <laughs> like, oh, I, sometimes we just have we, pancakes. Oh, we just yeah. have pancakes and sausage for dinner. We did it. We did it. It's like, <laughs> cool. You know, it's so funny but how different For foods. some reason, if you add a little protein with the chicken, all of a sudden it's chicken and waffles, and it's like, you know, Bobby Flay made it or something. Yeah, so it gets confusing it sometimes does. with the stuff. These rules. Uh, yeah. yeah, what else? We've got some other <laughs> we got good, some ones. good ones coming in here. Uh, uncles can't pick up the crying niece or nephew because it spoils them. Forget oh, it, Jim. Right? But, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're... They're only little ones. Yep. Uh, I, ate wa- I ate waffles an hour ago. Mike, you're breaking rules. Huzzah. Right? Huzzah, Mike. <laughs> Talk about the Sweet. art of winning at life, right? That's very good. All right. Well, clearly you guys get the point here. Um, so what I want to do is I want to go a little bit deeper and I want to talk a little bit more about um, these rules that don't exist and, and how we identify them and how we can get better at breaking them because we're maybe some of us aren't, aren't as good at that as others. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Okay, so uh, question. Are you an artist? I know that might seem like a weird question just to throw out of nowhere. And I'm sure many of you would say, no, I am not an artist. I can't even draw a stick figure or a circle or anything like that. But I would like to challenge that assumption. I believe everyone here is an artist of some sort. We all are creative beings. We are all in the process of creating a life or a community or a family or an organization that we want to be better, right? And in order to do that, we need creativity. We're always solving problems, uh, whether it's how to open the pickle jar or uh, you know, thing, any sort of thing requires some creative thinking to go in a different direction. So uh, I believe all of us are artists, whether or not you can draw. That's just that's just one kind of, of being an artist. And uh, one of the things that kind of makes me sad is that so many of us are living life like it is a paint by number. All right. Do you remember those when we were little? You have this paint by number and anything with a one, you might paint red. Anything with a two, you paint blue. And at the end, you kind of get something that looks like art. But it's not. It's not art. You're just you're just following directions, right? There's no creativity involved. There's no risk involved. I believe we are made for more than that. I believe that we're we're looking for someone to tell us all the answers, but that that makes for a pretty boring life. And uh, the truth is, is that they don't hang paint by numbers in the Louvre. You won't you won't find those in our fancy art museums, right? So we're all artists. Okay. The question is, sometimes we have we, we, our, our art muscle, our creative muscle, our play muscle is a little out of use. All right. So it's, it's a little uh, flabby, if you will. And uh, so what are, what are the things you can do? Okay. So there's, there's all kinds of rules. You might, you might have, when I asked the question earlier, what is a rule that doesn't exist that you sometimes live by or you see, you might have thought one that you kind of are scared about. Like you, you intellectually know it's, it is one but you're kind of afraid to break it, right? It might be like, oh, I need to go find a different job or I need to do something different or I've been told my whole life that I'm not, that I'm this and I really believe I'm this or or whatever. And those are really overwhelming. And so sometimes it's helpful to start by doing things that don't matter all that much to get that muscle built up of breaking smaller rules so that then if we encounter some bigger ones later on, we have the courage and the uh, understanding to know that like we, we can do that, right? Um, so one a good example is just like mixing up your cereal in the morning, okay? Some of you maybe already do that. Maybe you're the person who's like, you do know they sell them in separate boxes for a reason, right? Might be really weird for you to do that. That's okay. Find wherever on the spectrum of 
a, a cr craziness you are and start there. It doesn't, and we're not all gonna be the same, all right? So one good example of this is, is this one. It's one of my favorite examples to share that uh, Christmas cookies are supposed to look like Christmas cookies. Now, even if you don't celebrate Christmas, I'm willing to bet you could picture a Christmas cookie in your head, what they look like, because you know they're they're everywhere around December. And um, I'm willing to bet that probably every single one of you on here right now, you could you could imagine a Christmas cookie, and I bet every single one of you it would be a little bit different. That's how there's so many different kinds, right? So even though you can all imagine a different kind of Christmas cookie. I'm willing to bet no one here is picturing this right now. Uh, this is what we like to call an ugly cookie. And uh, believe it or not, these are actually Christmas cookies. And they were not made by a four-year-old. They were not made in a horrific kitchen blowing up accident or anything like that. They were made totally on purpose to look just like this. And the story goes back decades now. There was a, a woman named Terry, and every year she had a holiday party, and she, uh, you know, it was always tricky to get everything done. So in this particular year, she had a list a mile long and about this much time to get it all done. So she, she had to resort desperate measures. She resorted to something called delegation. You may have heard of it. You may have heard of it. It's something she's not, was not used to doing, but she turned to her husband and her son. And she said, uh, I need to run to the store. I need you guys to make a batch of my Christmas cookies. I have some errands I gotta get done, but I, you guys, I've left behind the ingredients. The recipe is very easy. You see me make this every year. I know you can do this. She leaves, husband and son, they're delighted. You see, because they love Christmas cookies, especially the eating part of them. But they're talking as they're pulling out the ingredients about how unfair it is that every year mom makes these cookies and they come out of the oven and there's nothing better than a fresh cookie right out of the oven. They want to grab one. No, those are for the guests. Not fair. Well, they decided now they're in control. They can do something about that. And they decided to come up with a solution. Now, uh, I can tell just by looking at you that we've got some smart people here. And if we were to brainstorm some ideas of, well, how could we fix this? I don't know. Maybe making more cookies would be a good option. No, that, that didn't even cross their mind. What they decided to do was to make the cookies as disgusting looking as possible on purpose. And they figured uh, no, no one will want to eat them. They'll be more for us. This was, your, this was their plan. Some of you are like, I know someone who would who would do that, right? Someone that that weird, strange, clueless, right? So they pull out the food coloring. They start making gross frostings. I mean, you can see here, we got army man green. They make it purple and brown and black frosting. You know, the tr traditional Christmas co colors. They pushed aside the normal decorating, the cookie cutters, and they pulled out things like cars and cows and feet and hands and like not mittens hands and they started making these cookies as ugly as they could and as soon as they finished was when mom walks in she comes home and she is freaking out she's like what in the world have you done i gave you one job these are disgusting looking are you guys idiots what were you thinking well they told her the whole plan as if she should give them a medal of honor and she's like, oh, can't, I can't, I can't even with you people. And she didn't have time to make a new batch, run back to the store, get better cookies. She's stuck. So she stands at the front of the uh, front door as people start to arrive. And before she even says, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, she says, I did not make those cookies. And, she, and, and people are like, what are you, what are you talking about? And uh, they're, they, they look at the cookies and they laugh. She tells them the story. They laugh harder. But the best part of the story, you guys, is later on in the evening, I don't know if someone had too much eggnog or what, someone decided to try one of the cookies. And they were delicious. And everyone else is like, seriously, those are good? And they're, I got to have one. I got to have one. I get. By the end of the night, all of the cookies were gone. The entire plan of the husband and son completely blew up. And rather than be deterred, they said, well... I guess next year, we just have to make them uglier.
and they were allowed to try. It was such a hit that the mom let them do it again because people were asking for it. They were looking forward to it. It became a thing. And they were doing this year after year after year after year. Eventually, they couldn't just stop once a year. Their creativity couldn't just be contained to Christmas. They eventually moved on to cakes. This is the son. That's not even the dad. That's the son. And they'd make, they'd make ugly cakes. They would make, this is a graduation cake. This was his high school graduation cake. Now, thinking about it now, this might have been a perfect, like, my senior year was COVID year, and this pretty much sums it up kind of a cake. But this was just like a regular, this was this graduation cake. I've never known anyone to go into a baker and be like, yep, that'll work. That'll work, right? So they turned this into a tradition. And they broke a rule that didn't exist. But what did they do? They created a memory. They created many memories. They created this tradition that was, was awesome. And so I've been telling this story over and over and over again, many years. And one time I was speaking at a school, a school in uh, Wisconsin, and I was just speaking to the staff. And, and a few months after I was there, the superintendent emailed me and he told me that one of their teachers had fallen ill and she was in the hospital and they were trying to figure out creative ways to help raise money for the hospital bills while also keeping things light and letting this teacher knew that she was uh, supported. And so they decided to host an ugly cake auction where they invited the students and families to bake and decorate ugly cakes. Um, they brought them into the gym. They invited the community and they said, we just will auction these off. It'll be fun. Well, it turns out they had 80 cakes that were submitted. They had uh, 800 people show up in the gym and they raised fifteen one five fifteen thousand dollars for this, this uh, woman and her family. And my favorite part is the superintendent guy sent me pictures of these cakes. Like if this isn't a thousand dollar cake, I don't know what, what it is, right? And then there's this one and here's my favorite. Just just drink that one in. There, Look at all that. There's a banana sticking out of it. There's bow tie pasta, there's broccoli, there's pretzels. There may or may not be a pork chop in there. I don't know. But here's the point, besides this being awesome, right? I just want to ask, what is something that you do every, every year, every holiday, every month, every week, every day, because you've always done it that way? What new opportunities are right on the other side of doing something different, of breaking a rule that doesn't exist? Maybe it's creating all new memories with your family. Maybe it's coming up with a really creative fundraising opportunity that no one's ever done before. Maybe it's finding a new way to be productive. Uh, there are so many, so many opportunities that we don't even realize. But the first step is identifying and being willing to break one of these rules that doesn't exist. Now, uh, another story I want to share happened when um, my youngest daughter was born. Uh, she was born right around Christmas. And by the time February rolled around, it was, we, we live in Wisconsin and it was, it was really, really cold winter, unusually cold. So we couldn't even go outside. And here we had three kids under five were cooped up in this house. And uh, basically the kids were uh, passing their time by pushing our buttons. It, we were going crazy. We would have given anything to be on a beach somewhere, playing in the sand where the kids could just play and run and run and run that, that that wasn't in the cart so here's what we opted for going out to eat I know I know if you, if you ever had kids you know going out to eat is not a picnic that's how desperate we were all right so it was my job to collect the children get them ready for public viewing and I noticed that my son Ben the middleman uh, he had a little purple smudge under his nose because he had been in the corner smelling markers. All right, don't, don't judge. He was quiet, okay? So I was gonna do the whole dad thing, just kind of like wipe it off. And Kim sees him and she says, he looks kind of like Charlie Chaplin. And I'm like, yeah, I guess he does. And then she says, uh, why can't parents just draw mustaches on their kids? And she said it like so seriously, not even joking that it seemed like it demanded a serious response. It was as if 
parents for millennia had been asking this question, why, why can't we just draw on our kids, right? And I was like, probably because of what other people would think. As soon as those words came out of my mouth, I knew what I had to do. I, I turned to my oldest daughter, I said, Lucy, can you give me that purple marker over there? And she gave it to me and I brought my son Ben in front of me and I knelt down and I drew this mustache on my boy. And I said, all right, we're going out to eat. Now, I'll be honest with you. At first, I, you know, we got into the car. You have these ideas in your living room and you're like, this is a great idea. And then you get in the car and you're like, are, are we really doing this? And I had a moment where I'm like, I don't know. I think DCFS might come down and be like, we need to get these kids out of here. These parents don't know what the hell they're doing, right? They're freaking out. But we got to the restaurant and it was the opposite of that. I don't know what the opposite of DCFS taking your kids like, here, here's more kids. Take all the kids. It wasn't like that. But it was every person we encountered smiled, laughed, the other diners, the, the waiter, the waitress, the hostesses, that it was hilarious. And Ben, he was like three. He didn't even realize what I had done. He was just busy eating his chocolate chip pancakes, playing with the Star Wars guys, minding his own business. He looked like a little tiny ringleader in Willy Wonka's circus. And I learned two important lessons that day. The first was that if you are a parent, or even a grandparent, and you are, you are not taking advantage of drawing on your children, you are missing out, my friend, all right? Uh, I recommend Crayola. If you wanna do Sharpie, you do you, all right? But probably the, the more important lesson is that I learned that sometimes it's those little things that make the biggest difference. Here we were, a young family having a really rough go of it. I'm not gonna lie to you, we were at our wit's end. And this one little decision not only brightened our day, but brightened the day of so many other people. It wasn't my intent. I didn't mean to make people's day better. It just happened because of this one little thing. And I think sometimes when life happens to us, sometimes we get bad news. Sometimes things don't go our way. Sometimes we can't control some of the bigger things that are happening in our, in our culture or our country. And I think it doesn't do any good to spend time being anxious or worried about it. What we can do is say, what, what can I do? We, we can throw our hands up and say, there's nothing I can do. And that's just a lie. What you can do is one small thing, a small act of kindness, a interaction that you have with your neighbor. As it was said earlier in the chat, talking to someone in the checkout line can make a big difference. And it can not only turn our attitude around, it could make the day of someone else. And so when, when we wrote this book about rules that don't exist, we went on a book tour. And instead of just having a boring book tour where just some guy sitting behind a table signing books, we wanted to make it interactive. So we had different stations where people could actually break rules. And one of them was the opportunity to draw on your kids. And people loved it. They, they were, I don't know if the parents loved it more than the kids, but it was a riot. It was hilarious. And, and, and there again, another example of how one decision on one day made our day better, made diners and waitresses day better, but then it continues to ripple. And then this book came out and then this book tour happened and more and more and more people were touched by this one little thing. And so I think when we look at the things that we're not supposed to do, if the, if the reason we wouldn't do something is because of what someone else would say, not because it's illegal, not because it's dangerous, but just because of what someone else might say, that is a big red flag that you may have encountered a rule that doesn't exist. Because when you break it, you can bring a whole rays of light uh, into the world just by that one little thing. I think um, Doug said it awesomely. He's like, oh, you should have drawn one on yourself and your wife also. <laughs> And honestly, the kids have now since had their payback on us. Uh, what, two years ago, we, we launched. That to me. Yes, um, in August of 2020, um, after several months of the pandemic, we launched what we call the Wonder and Whimsy Society, where we have a membership part of our, our world here at Escape Adulthood. But we asked the kids at, for this kind of launch day to, we did some fun things with them and we let them have loose on us with markers we and did. the pictures are priceless, but they did not hold back. We're, our faces were covered yeah. in markers. It was, it was, uh, <laughs> and it was Crayola, not Sharpie, based on the, the fact that we could control not an that. Idiot. All right, not an idiot. Uh, so yeah, so 
hopefully that's encouraging to you. Uh, but it's time to move on and do something a little bit different. Yes. I'm going to set this up, Kim. Yes. Well, you know, you guys, I have a feeling this isn't your first Zoom. Okay. Just especially those with your cameras on, you look pretty comfortable. You've been around the block with Zooms. But I, I'm willing to bet that unless you were here a month ago, you may not have done what we're about to do. There, you, go ahead and grab a piece of paper, whether it's the back of an envelope, a, a sticky note, something that you have laying around could be very small. Grab a pen, a pencil. I think it's time to draw. All right, so we're going to take you step by step through a drawing. So anyone who earlier said, nope, not an artist, can't draw, this prepare, is your to, time. prepare to have your mind blown. <laughs> All right, we're just going to take it one step at a time, just follow along. And it might look a little bit different, but it might also look a little bit better. All right, everyone's is going to look a little bit different. But what we're going to start, start out with here, uh, this is one of my favorite things to draw, and I think you guys are going to, you're going to like it. Um, so we're going to start at the very top of our paper with kind of a, an oblong oval shape. See how it wasn't perfectly yeah. perfect, right? And it doesn't it's, have to be. It doesn't have to be, nope. right? Nope. All right, so just draw that little little shape there. And it could be, it really doesn't have to be that old, even oval, it just be any round shape, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a little, uh, a little line like that. And that's it. No, just kidding. <laughs> And Good that's job, a Chinese you guys. character for Olympics. Uh, no. Um, now what we're going to do is we're, we're going to draw another line like so. It's a little, little uh, curved line. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to draw another line. This is going to be a straight line, straight short short line, kind of angled, about like that. Okay. So far, so I good. Can see those with their cameras on are yeah, really people are drawing. They're doing so. good. All right. Good job, everybody. Now we're gonna draw another line. Just just a little line like that. I like how you're breaking this down because those are some really odd series of lines. And they are. Yeah. And it's gonna come together okay. here in a little bit. So we're gonna do we're gonna continue with that line. And this is one of my favorite things. Where this is basically I just drew a little bump out. Little bump out. Um, we do this. <laughs> we have a weekly live show on Facebook on Wednesday nights, and and every week we do a different drawing. And I have all these really technical, technical terms. I think you have been bump using out. bump out like three weeks in a row. I know. I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. <laughs> um, you will not find it in any in any art textbook. All right. So okay, now we're going to draw a uh, kind of a round. It's not a bump out. I got to come up with a name for this, but just uh, just watch out. me. Okay. We're just going to kind of make this round and we're going to bring it to connect to that line there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would love to see if anyone at this point has any guesses. Mm -hmm. It's always kind of fun. Pretty, this happens every tricky. week on the live show. Like, oh, I think it's a lamp or I think it's whatever. And it will make sense in a few more steps, but it's always fun at this point to see what do you guys think this is. All right. Now I'm going to I'm going to connect to this other bump out and do another round line, bringing it around like this. If you look, it almost looks like a B shape off to the side, like the, that mm -hmm. the bottom part, it's kind of a little bit of a B, like the letter B. It looks like a flying letter bunny, B. like a little bunny that's little like bunny. soaring. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. now, we're, now I'm gonna draw a, a, just a line right like that. And then I'm gonna draw another line that goes from here and just kind of curves around. And again, yours probably won't look uh, exact as mine, but the variations are what's going to give it a different character and make it look um, really cool. All right, now we're going to draw um, four lines sticking out here, just like that. Mm -hmm. So far, so good. So far, so good. Now we're gonna we're gonna draw a couple M's, basically like this. See, just a little M, a little jagged line. All right, and then we're gonna make a little triangle right there. I wonder how many people are gonna YouTube Bob Ross tonight. Mm. Is this if, you gonna... need to, if you need to fall asleep, a little- <laughs> It's so relaxing, calming. I know. And then we're gonna make a little, <laughs> little dot, this is gonna be a little eye. And then I'm gonna draw a line down. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, you kind of see now, it looks a little, little, little penguin doesn't moment. it? Little light bulb and, uh, moment. I'm just going to draw a little, a little. Um, Does that look familiar, you guys? Yes. What do they call that part of the balloon? The little part that gets tied Does it have off. A name? Right? Just a little, just a little scribble down there. Yes, All right. Now, if you, if you want, you can, um, you can color it. You can color it later. I, I doubt there's. Uh, everyone came with their 64 pack of crayons, but you never know. You never know. I've got mine within arm's reach. <laughs> it's on there. It's like a holster, right? So I'm just going to color this guy in real quick. Oh, someone. Oh, I can't tell who that is that is holding up. Oh, color pencils. Is it? Oh, let's see. Let's see. Oh, Courtney looks like go. something fun there. Oh, man. She's, she's, oh, look she's at Doug's on. got his picture there. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at you guys see? rocking and rolling. All right, now there's one more thing I've got to add here that kind of makes this next level. And uh, anyone who's who happens to be familiar with my work or maybe happens to even have the book Penguins Can't Fly will know what's coming here. But one of the things I, I think adds another layer of this, which is what this picture kind of symbolizes, is underneath, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the word impossible. Because, as everyone knows, it's supposedly impossible for penguins to fly. Mm-hmm. And then the best part is to take a nice bold color. Of course, if you just have your pen, it'll still work. If you just draw like an X through that part. So they can still kind of see it says the I am is there. But what we now see is that, well, maybe maybe it isn't mm-hmm. so impossible. Maybe just got to come all. up with a new way. Right. And it's a good little reminder. I'm going to put a little little dot there to make that. Uh, Jason's highlight. actually, he, we don't tell too many people this. So we'll let you in on a little secret, but Jason oh, is writing the origin story of. So, our penguin is named Marty, and we actually have like little Marty penguins that come along with the books when you buy them and um, fun things that happen with that little penguins. But you're writing the origin story of this little guy. Like, why is he flying? What is happening and how did this happen? And these little penguins on the bottom don't look too happy about this. Like what's their story? So that's actually a a story you're writing right now, aren't you? I am working on that, yep. Yes. Um, Okay, so here's the best part. I wanna see, and some of you already did, but I wanna see people with your cameras on. Yes, please show it. Cora, I see yours. Gerald, Gerald, excellent job. John, good job. Elizabeth, Doug, good job. Uh, Rose, Margaret, Courtney, Margaret. Avery, good work. Denise. Okay, Aww. Chevelle, turn on the pretty? camera just for this. Look at that. I love the balloon. <laughs> great work. Great work. Brian and Cheryl. I don't know which, if it's Brian or Cheryl. Can't see, but I do see the art and I love it. Looks Yay. like it's maybe Cheryl. Good work, you guys. Thank you for, for sharing. I appreciate that. We kind of oh, like it. Looks joke. like Brian is Brian off to the side there. Is there both? Did I see two drawings? No. Oh, uh, just okay. the one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for playing along. That was fun. So now that's a good little, little souvenir. I know. Today, and if, right? if that was something fun that you enjoyed, if you go to our YouTube channel, so it's like youtube.com slash escape adulthood. Um, we have these playlists on there and there is a playlist called let's draw. And there are like 75 of these, you guys from our weekly show um, that are pretty fun. Every, I mean, we, we kind of say it's like Bob Ross meets Willy Wonka because he's going to take you step by step, but it's going to be something whimsical and probably something you have never drawn before ever. Um, one week, what we, you drew like a cat in Lederhosen. I did. Yeah. did do we that. had a polka yeah. um, musician on our show as a guest, mm-hmm. um, but it's just always something playful and it's something you can do just to relax, maybe something to share with, with someone you love. So yeah. Um, All right. Well, um, our time is, is drawing it's going quick. N- 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 nigh. Is that, is that is that old oldie timey words? I don't, I don't know. Our, we have not a lot of time. <laughs> we speak good, uh, but we do want to jam in some more ideas. So if you were here last time, we shared five different <laughs> random ideas to fight adultitis, bring more fun into your life, and we're back with five new ones. Yes, let's do it. Okay, Margaret, I see you said, what time is the Wednesday draw? So the 
uh, weekly show is at 7.45. We go live at 7.45 Central Time on our Facebook page, mm -hmm. which you can find from Escape Adulthood. Just type in Escape Adulthood, you'll find it. And the uh, the drawing segment is somewhere in the middle there, depending yep. on what else. Last night on. was show number 82. So mm -hmm. there are we have a lot of fun on there. So yes, please join us. So okay. five <laughs> ideas to um, keep adultitis at bay. Obviously, it's time to make some ugly cookies. Yes, right? don't need Christmas to make ugly cookies. All right. Uh, one of one of our favorite hacks is to just get store bought yeah. cookie dough, and then raid your fridge <laughs> or pantry for Valentine candy, Halloween Whatever candy, left over. perhaps Easter candy from a year ago now, and just put that in the batter um, either before or after, and boom, yeah, ugly cookies right there. Yes, I um, think there's a peanut on there, obviously a goldfish. We've done pickles in the yes. past, yes. Yeah. So it doesn't always have to taste bad, but no. you can really just kind of have some fun. It could turn into something a little bit even crazier if you want. Yeah, that, that, that's again, wherever you are on the crazy spectrum, <laughs> go for it. Own it. All right, uh, this one is called Doodle Smile. And the premise here is to draw something funny, silly, inspirational, maybe illustrate a knock-knock joke and hide it somewhere unexpected for someone to find. Yes. Right, so we, we did this uh, years ago. I was on a flight to San Francisco, both of us were. And uh, man, I don't even know if they even have these anymore. I haven't. Yeah, they do. And do the they motion with, sickness bags, yeah. Because I, yeah. I saw on my recent flight, they took out the magazine probably a COVID oh. thing now so i don't i don't oh, know what's going on maybe you have to ask for them. anyway some of you you know what this is right motion discomfort bag <laughs> if well you ever i flew was before 2020 <laughs> <laughs> yeah if if you enjoyed the halftime show of the super bowl <laughs> you will know this movie all right apparently only gen gen xers like the halftime show i don't know um but we loved it we loved there's a movie called wayne's world back in the day with uh, mike myers and dana carvey and uh, there was a scene where it's about these slacker guys it was based off a Saturday Night Live skit. And there was this guy named Garth and Wayne, and they picked up a friend who had had a little bit too much to drink and looked like he might, uh, as they say, blow chunks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good visual. Uh, and so Garth was concerned of that happening in the car. So he gave him, pulled out a little, like a Dixie cup, like one of those little things you put ketchup in. And he handed it to him. And he said, if you have to spew, spew in this. So I drew my best version of Garth and I wrote on this motion discomfort <laughs> bag, if you have to spew, spew in this. Tucked it back in the seat back pocket. In their head. Thank, I, thank you for that. Um, we appreciate the acknowledgement. No idea who found it after me, right? But I like to think they did. Humor, but not everybody gets it. Well, they might not have, but yeah. someone did. Yeah. So I am convinced someone's day was made <laughs> when they <laughs> sat down. Maybe they had a bad vacation or bad sales trip and uh this this turned up and made them well, turn if they were grabbing if they were grabbing the motion sickness bag they needed to be cheered up probably now on a on a on a more pedestrian way of looking at it you you guys you just drew something you just drew something fun and inspirational you could hide that somewhere to be an encouragement to someone maybe someone who's who's uh doubting themselves right now maybe this little marty is just the thing that they need a little encouragement. Right? yes this one's an easy one outside the line so uh, the simplest thing i think most people in your cupboard right now along by the baking soda and the the extra salt is food coloring, right? Do most people keep that handy? We always had food so. coloring in the house growing up. And it's just so simple to pull that out and at your next meal, just go outside the lines and turn things colors. Like how about some purple mashed potatoes? Obviously green eggs and ham is always going to be fun, especially with St. Patrick's Day. I, I gotta out. say, I, I love how Acidic green, those green eggs That's are. I nailed that. Green. that good. Yes. But even turning your milk green or turn it right blue. in this so, case right. Blue, right in this case yeah so it's something very mm. very simple especially if you have guests coming over just having a rainbow meal i mean it really does blow with your head a little bit and sometimes it messes with your taste buds just and it doesn't but it's just all in your head it's right yeah. uh, i like uh, courtney says my sister makes superhero macaroni and cheese for my nephew Aww. always a different color oh there you go. Okay. we are trying that <laughs> possibly this weekend. That's I love awesome. that idea. Uh, okay. Spatula city. Mm -hmm. This is uh, this is a fun one. That's Next time 
uh, you're making dinner, you have some people over, uh, pull out all of the unusual kitchen utensils, spaghetti forks, whisks, spatulas, soup ladles, things like that. Just put them on the table. And one by one, everyone who's joining you for dinner has to choose one of the utensils. Mm -hmm. And then what do they do with it, Kim? They have to eat their whole dinner with that utensil. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you might think, gross. Yeah, because it does get a little messy, especially if you had a whisk, right? <laughs> Yeah, you have, don't you have do to be soup. Don't, yeah, don't, don't do, do soup, soup with a whisk. whisk. It's got to yeah. be something you have to, usable, It has but... to work. I mean, a pasta scooper, like that cute little red one right now, there. Now, if you have smiley. soup and everyone has a soup ladle, that's Yeah, that's awesome. awesome. That is that's... awesome. The other thing we've done before, this is a totally different idea, but we've done tiny spoons. We did that at one of our escape. Yeah, like the little summit. sample spoons you the get at like the ice cream spoons. place. Yeah. That's, have that's your whole good. meal with a sample spoon. And it's a good way to cut calories, honestly, because yeah. after a while you just get tired. <laughs> yeah. Does, doesn't cost any money. <laughs> Pictures are priceless, right? And then finally, I know uh, people are joining from all over the place. Some of you may be tired of winter. Uh, spring is around the corner, but, oh. uh, you know, sometimes it needs a little nudge to get out the door. Sometimes we get that that stir craziness about this time of year and some of the colder climates. And we suggest that you have a scram winter party. Now this is yes. a pretty good rule that doesn't exist. Some of these things we're, we're actually having one tomorrow night. We are, we have we are. 14 we actually people really are. gonna be around for a scram winter party tomorrow night. Our daughter <laughs> is busy making palm trees as we speak. Um, to put around the house the decorations yeah oh yeah she, she said she wanted to make 16 of them i'm like okay <laughs> go for so it what, what else is involved in a scram winter party so yes a scram winter party is basically just find your favorite summer gear turn the heat up and maybe get yeah, some we're plays. talking like to 80 yeah all right this is not the time like, to conserve get the tank top on. it's just for one party right Get it up so that you can be wearing shorts. You need shorts. some umbrellas for your drinks. You need your sunglasses. You need maybe some beach towels, some Hawaiian music, anything that's going to get you in kind of a festive, you know, tropical like feel. What we did, did you have the picture with the green screen? Or no, uh, oh, yeah, I don't we, end this one. Okay. Let me explain it. Okay. So we did, we ordered Hawaiian pizza. We got some flowers. It had some fruit kebabs. I mean, this is just however you like to party in the summer do that in the winter and pretend like it's summer. Yeah, one of the things I did is we got a green tablecloth, like just a plastic yeah. tablecloth and hung it on the wall and then took pictures uh, in front of it, like our family or guests or whatever. And then in, a, in most photo editing programs, it's really easy to just select the green and delete it out. That's how they do the movies with the special effects. And then we put like tropical photos, like Hawaii in the background <laughs> and made it look like all of our guests were at this beautiful resort and it was, it was, it was pretty awesome. legit. I yeah. know. It's pretty cool. So that's a rule that doesn't exist is that you have to tolerate winter um, and you can't just celebrate a tropical party. Uh, did you mention like watching a, a fun movie? Oh, yeah. Even? Like, yeah. Like a summertime Lilo movie. and Stitch or Blue Hawaii or something like that. Yeah. The possibilities good, good are endless. We're actually making Kalua <clears throat> pork tomorrow night with a Hawaiian yeah. meal and uh, fruit pizza and all sorts of stuff. So it's yeah, gonna be shiny. Good. Okay, well, we're winding down, but we wanna, we don't wanna get out of here before we give you a, a little bit of a, a giveaway, all right? All okay, right. so all you have to do to enter this is to put in the chat, what has been your biggest takeaway from the session? Could be something silly, something serious, whatever it is. What 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 will you remember as you're resting your head onto the pillow tonight, as you sleep on your side of the bed? <laughs> uh, what 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 was your biggest takeaway? And what what can they win? Yes, Kim? we're gonna send out this book. Uh, this is the Penguins Can't Fly. Um, book that has obviously the penguin artwork but 39 other rules that don't exist so 40 rules altogether that you can start breaking today um and honestly it's got jason's artwork in it this a lot of the stories we shared but a lot of other ones it's got the mustache well. story it's got the ugly cookies yep. it's got it's got the, the, bed. the bed. so that'll be fun so we'll definitely get that out to someone who answers the question, what has been your biggest takeaway? And we are going to be back here in four, four weeks, you guys. So this is the second out of four, um, you know, ser a series that we're doing for the cancer fighters and CTCA. So we're excited to, to be a part of that in a couple of weeks with you guys as well. And they're all different. They're yeah. all different. So feel free to jump, jump on all of them. 
Uh, what do we got? We got, uh, it's okay to break some rules, Brian and Cheryl. I think that was Cheryl. That was the one. Uh, let's nice. see, uh, look for ways to be creative in everyday life. Mm. Jennifer liked the technical definition of adultitis. You're welcome. <laughs> see, see, uh, what you're doing. <laughs> Vince said, mix your cereals. Yes, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a fun one. And don't be afraid to break unspoken rules. Mm. Doug just says, what, what rules? <laughs> uh, He's in the uh, right place. Denise, it's just like we were speaking to the choir. So that I'm not the only one who breaks unwritten rules. Uh, yep, you are not alone there. Yep. Um, there's depth. There's room to laugh at every moment in life. Nice. Diana, color outside the lines more. Christine liked the scram winter party. Yeah. Um, how about this, Glory? My biggest takeaway is that nothing is impossible. You just have to find a new way to do it. I love that. Yeah. Uh, Brian, we encourage Brian to stop making the bed for his wife. All right. Well, <laughs> you can you can blame us. That's okay. Um, uh oh, we might get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. No, that's usually that's always something. Uh, I need to do more doodling. Danny, Danny says, um, break check the out rules. the let's draw. Don't live yeah. the dot to dot life. Love that, Elizabeth. Yes. Um, <laughs> Diana, wear white all year round long. Yeah, <laughs> that that the book talks about. There's a there's a history to that, which is pretty fascinating. Yeah. Um, good stuff, you guys. I thank you for sharing that, and keep keep those coming in. We will pick a winner and uh, get in touch with Jen to be able to get get your information so we can send out the prize. Um, What's this here? Oh yes. Well, that's yeah. the other thing. So we mentioned this last time, and we we want to do something special for this this group, and so. Uh, we wanted to offer uh, a little something extra. So if you like the, the artwork that was behind us the, the whole time, this uh, it's a little dog running. I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can get this. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Uh, live like someone left the gate open. This is a five by seven art that you can download for free. Um, we have what we call the Adultitis Fighter Arsenal, and it is a treasure trove of some of our best Adultitis fighting tools. We have eBooks and downloads and digital wallpaper and all sorts of uh, exciting things. There's actually a, a book discussion guide for this book. Like yeah. if you wanted to make a book club out of it, there's questions to, to go through it. Um, but this, this is a download. You can print this off. You can use this for your personal use. It fits in a five by seven frame, uh, totally free. All you have to do is go to escapeadulthood.com slash insider. Or if you're the texting type, you can text escape to 66866. You will be uh, enrolled in our merry band of adultitis fighters. We have about 18,000 18, people all over the world who yes. are serious about fighting adultitis and every Sunday morning I send a little reminder, a little message with some art and an inspiring thought, something to think about to help you in your fight against adultitis. We get a lot of feedback that the Sunday morning messages are something that people really look forward to. So we hope you'll be a part of our, our like Jason said, our merry band of adultitis fighters. And in the process, you'll get access to this um, adultitis fighter arsenal which will have the download. Yeah, so just in closing, thank you again for being with us tonight. It's been a, it's been a blast. Um, this idea of breaking rules that don't exist is all about freedom to me. It's about the freedom to create a life that is awesome, a story that is amazing, right? Not just for ourselves, but for the people we love and for the communities that we're a part of. And sometimes we just get so caught up in doing things a certain way that it's actually holding us back from that. And so one of the things I like to kind of think about, like my job, like and what we do for a living is in a lot of ways, we try to help people be awesome or more awesome than they already are. And uh, you might say, well, how do you do that? Right. So this picture, someone sent me this photo a long time ago. And it, to me, it sums it up perfect that whoever allowed their daughter to go to a princess party dressed as the dark night. See that? <laughs> Got a little, little bat girl there amidst all of the princesses. I think they were on the right track because anytime we can teach our children that they don't have to do the same thing as everyone else is a good thing. But you know what? Anytime we can internalize that message ourselves is even better. And so that's, that's really, I think, the core of the message is that we are meant for more than a paint by number of life. And whether you can draw a, a perfect circle or a stick figure or not, we're all artists. We all have the chance to create something awesome. And the truth is, is we are on different uh, 
parts of the spectrum of risk taking and rule breaking, and that's okay. Just promise me that that wherever you are, every once in a while, you will go outside the lines and make adultitis go running for the hills. And I promise me, promise you, if you do that every once in a while, adultitis will not be happy about it, but you will be. So thank you guys so much. Uh, it was a pleasure to be with you. Hope you have a wonderful evening. Yes. Turn it back to, to Jen. Thanks for having us. We'll see you in a couple of weeks.